Hello all. Today we will be uh, talking about Zeek, fundamentals of Zeek, how uh, we can utilize Zeek for different use cases, and how can we understand the Zeek connection logs. Um, this video will be part of a series, like a Zeek series, video series, and uh, this this will be the first one of this series. Uh, so yeah, let's let's get going and start our introduction to Zeek video. So what is Zeek? Zeek actually is a uh, network security monitoring tool, but it is more than that. Like it's actually a framework. Like it is a like network security monitoring infrastructure so that you can program it to use for your use cases and other stuff but most of the times our people are just like thinking Zeek is just a logging like network logging tool but it is more than that like you can program it you can uh, write your own custom detections and other stuff but by, by default since some of the well-known network security monitoring Linux distributions like Security Onion, Selks, and other stuff. Using Zeek for network security logging. Uh, this is Zeek's primary use case. But today uh, we will just give a brief intro about Zeek in general and just mention about the, uh, the most important log type of this use case, connection logs. So yeah, let's let's get going. So to demonstrate our example, I will just download a sample from uh, here, and I will download this network traffic, like a Cobol Strike pickup traffic. Uh, and yeah, here's I downloaded here and extracted the zip using password infected and to use uh, to utilize Zeek I found a script from internet like uh, to run Zeek on a pickup file so what this script does is it basically helps running Zeek on a pickup file so we are not just running it, ru running the default settings, but we also enable the file extraction module. Like I said, Zeek is not only logging. You can also create uh, like uh, different scripts for the network traffic to manipulate to uh, detect some stuff on network traffic. And this script also is one of these examples. So basically. It is adding a uh, file like analyze extracting function as an analyzer and whenever it sees a new file in transferred like in any of the protocols uh, that it supports it can uh, extract the raw file itself from the traffic so it is not about logging but also we are triggering a file extractions so this script is also uh, doing that, but uh, for installing the Zeek, the basic Zeek, you can, it depends on your Linux distribution, but for example, if it is a Debian Ubuntu based, Debian based distribution like Ubuntu and or other stuff, you can just use apt tool and you can search apt search Zeek and you can download related packets here. You can install the Zeek packet and then it will uh, put the binary by default in here. But uh, you need to uh, find your own distribution, like you need to find your uh, installation guides based on your distribution. So we are not forcing any distribution here. I am using a Runnox machine, but yeah, you can use other distributions also and other. Uh, Zeek packages 
or you can just compile it compile it by yourself uh, yeah so to run zik i will just trigger my zik extract commands which will run the basic uh, zik command on my pcap including file extractions so here i am just running it so yeah it's this uh, uh, zik run created different log types because my network traffic including an ssl http files like there are files in the network traffic some dns some connect uh, like since every uh, thing is a connection in the end like it also creates a connection notebook so let's also take a look at the extracted files you can see all the extracted files here uh, with the protocols they have been found like http like ssl and other stuff like you can also uh, question their types and other stuff for example this is an ascii text file extracted that is http and these are just data raw data so yeah that is what this file extraction script does because we are not just running uh, Zeek, we are also enabling the file extraction module. So fun.log. This is the fundamental log type here in our example. Uh, it is almost identical to network flow, but more than that. Like you can see uh, source, host, source port, destination, host, destination port. But Zeek calls them originator because it solves this ambiguity problem like because especially for return traffic and other stuff we always want to see the who creates the connection who creates the session who responded it so this originator alias is more uh, helpful than the uh, source i think and for the destination like who responds like this is the responder source. let's take uh, let's take a simple example here uh, like let's get first 10 lines uh, on this connection.log file so here is the column names like timestamp you can follow it using, using here like in order timestamp uid with the correlation value with other log types like for example if this, this is a dns you will see the uh, corresponding uh, log like dns talk in the dns.log file that we already see here like dns.log file and you can correlate these two logs like since it's a connection there is a log for conduct there is a log in conduct log and since this is also a dns log you will see a separate line in the dns.log that contains dns details so yeah originator host originator port responder host responder port protocol like since it is dns by default it will be udp and service uh, this is the service column and duration and originate originator bytes responder bytes so yeah back uh, basically uh, in this time stamp in this at this date at this time this source ask to this ip which looks like a gateway ip because of the dot one ending like uh, to it is port 53 like dns port basically it asks a dns question uh, to this ip and the originator bytes the sender sent 59 bytes and responders responded with 599 bytes that means that it returned lots of data like we will see it now so what is con, con state like we saw the responder bytes and also what is con state con state is connection state and there is lots of detail here so if you visit this address and if you uh, download this 
uh, cheat sheet. For example, this is, this part is for con.doc that we, we will be currently looking at. Like con state has different uh, shortcuts, like different, uh, it provides different context regarding the connection state of the traffic. So here we are seeing an SF and then that, that means SF, this connection is normal, established and terminated and more than zero byte transferred like so that means this connection was like its state was successful and also we are seeing another value here like I am passing this local origin local responder stuff and and missed bytes we, we like missed byte is zero there is another uh, detail here called history history giving more detail about history of this connection like if it is a big big letter that means this history created by the originator if it is the lowercase letter that means that history is created by responder so big d and small d since it is udp that we will not we, we, we would expect we wouldn't expect to see a handshake and other stuff regarding the connection history because it is a stateless protocol udp like we will just see a, a data transfer and data response so here the same document you can see the d is packed with payload data and little d is say saying that host like uh, originator sent a data with like a packet with payload, a packet with data, and also responders send a packet with payload. That explains this transfer bytes, like 59 bytes sent, 499 bytes responded. So that explains this history of this connection. Sent, responded, it was a successful connection, and here's the history. And you can also look other uh, details, like you can look their details here too but that these are the important uh, parts like regarding the history stuff i think it it would be helpful to take a look at this concept with a tcp uh, connection so this line is a uh, belonging to a ssl connection done with a tcp of course uh, and here you are seeing a more detailed history so here this ip uh, connected to this ip with this port on this port 443 default most of the time default https port and it used tcp and it used ssl service and the connection duration was for 41 uh, and you can also see the uh, Originator bytes, responder bytes. It sent lots of data, and it it is again SF normal established. And when you see this part, now we are seeing a more detailed history of the connection. Like, like I said, big letters are from originator, small letters from responder. So this is a sin, sinec, ec, and data sent. Act received, data received, fin sent from the originator, fin sent from the responder. So you can take a look to their details like big S, sin, sinec, ec, and data sent and fin. Basically, you are seeing the, the three way handshake, the transfer data an acknowledgement and the fin like it's a normal established and normal terminated ssl connection so uh, we saw a udp example a tcp example and also now we can also take a look uh, these uid values like i said in the previous log line in the connection log line we saw uh, this uid and uh, we we will see all the details regarding this UID. Like like I said, every connection will have a log in con.log, 
because eventually it's a connection. But since it is also also a DNS log, you will see the details like this sent a DNS request, this stuff, so on and so forth. And this is the DNS log uh, corresponding DNS log. So here you can see the all the details here in DNS log, which which columns it is what and other stuff. But basically you can see we asked the domain like ask a domain and it responded lots of IPs for resolving this domain. So we correlated these two connections like because in the upper higher level we saw yeah the DNS request was made but there were there weren't any details but regarding to DNS details of this connection we pivoted to DNS talk using that this value and sold all the details like TTLs and state and record type and other stuff. It is also relevant with other uh, log types too. It is not just DNS. Like for example, we in the previous example we also saw like SSL log. And of course, we will also find this SSL log details in the SSL .doc because because this connection is SSL. And here we are seeing the SSL version and cipher seed details. And uh, even though it's SSL, still we are seeing the domain because it's a public information for now. Like, uh, yeah. So today's video, uh, in today's video, we saw fundamentals of Zeek, what is Zeek, and how can we interpret the interpret the Zeek uh, logs? Uh, how can we pivot be between different logs? And the most important use cases for Zeek. So, for example. As a practice, if you have time, you can hash these files in the extract files and uh, ask them to virus total if you can see any uh, virus total match for these uh, files because they are. They are the actual files, they are not just metadata. So yeah, as a practice, you can ask this stuff to virus total, and maybe you, you, you can find a malicious hash and other stuff. So yeah, thanks for listening to me. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like the video, subscribe to my channel, and if you have any questions or comments, Throw them in the section, related section. See you on the next video. Thank you.